Well, hello again, YouTube. Um, welcome back. Today is a bit more Operation TVR, uh, mainly Operation Brakes. <clears throat> so, um, works a little bit quiet. I managed to grab a couple of hours off. So, what I thought I would do is uh, make a start on fitting our new brakes. So, I just bought some uh, some pads for the rear and performance friction from. Uh, Alan at AS Performance in Berkeley, so huge thanks to Alan because he uh, always looks after me. Um, as I say, that's the, the part number for these ones. Performance friction brakes we use. This what we've went for is a, a fast road compound. Um, the ones that are on the car at the moment are a DS3000 Ferrodo uh, full race compound, but with it being on a single piston going to a, a twin piston, when I just wasn't sure if how much extra braking force it would give so what we thought was we'll start with these ones if it hasn't got enough at the back i can always go up but it saves uh, having too much at the back and kind of locking the arse end up all the time so um obviously got discs pads calipers so easy to get to the driver's side so we're going to do the driver's side now um i'll do the rear and then i'll move on get the fronts done um which will be a Bit of a pain because we've got the uh we've got a space calipers out a little bit but i can certainly do all the measurements and stuff like that today and then um basically if i can get this side done i'll know everything fits no issues no kind of modifications needed on the rear because in theory it's bolt off bolt on on the rear the only thing that should be awkward is um checking what the uh the fitment is because on these it's an m10b1 straight into the back of the caliper i can't remember what it is on the original calipers if it's a banjo fitting or if it's straight in i'm hoping it's a it's an m10b1 uh fitting straight in keep it nice and nice and the same um but let's find out shall we so wheels off and guess what put the light on there it's a banjo fitting in that one so just as well we uh we checked today um and didn't wait until next year so we'll still get everything swapped over um, and all I'll do is measure what this line is and uh, we'll order a pair off the internet um, and I should have them to be fair by the middle of next week I would imagine um, I usually just use hell performance off the off the old tinter web um, but uh, yeah so it's a banjo fitting on that one but so we'll get that one We'll get the caliper little off. I'll just leave them attached to the hoses today so that we're not getting brake fluid kind of everywhere. But uh, at least we can get the rest of it on, make sure it all fits and, uh, and kind of see where we are from there. Eh? Well, that took an embarrassingly long time. Not going to lie. Uh, bolt in here was seasoned at the back of the caliper in the top one. Bottom one, no problem, but the top one, pain in the ass. But it's out. So now it's a case say that should in theory bolt on like that i think so that well that that'd be that way i want it that should bolt on like that and then hopefully fingers crossed this disc is going to go on without any issues so this is that one be the right hand one oh, sorry about that folks Okay, so, voila, don't know what these are the holes are for, right? but I'm assuming different stud pattern, four stud pattern and five stud pattern. So, now that'll sit like that. Fingers crossed. We'll get that on. So I'm just going to have a little bit of a fiddle about, make sure it's going to go on, and then uh, happy days. What I've found is these uh, discs, although they're the same as the old ones, the spacing and everything, well, it's not an issue with the disc actually, it's more the calibre. I need to put the wheel spacer, what I've had to do temporarily, put the wheel spacer on the back, then the disc on. What do we need? Because otherwise, Basically, this disc is spaced too far back for the way this caliper is. So it's nice and easy, actually, how these work. It's uh, it's literally just that little. I've 
there's already one that's already sprung across the garage so I don't want to take it out but you can just see little R clip through there pop that out pull the pin out both sides pads out pads in pins back in boom done but you can see that that's kind of going to sit perfect with the wheel spacer on and then we've got some new are you gonna stay stay so what we've got when i've just put them rather than the allen ball allen head bolts has come off you can see where they've kind of corroded within the caliper some new bog standard m10 by 30 bolts and if i can let's see how good we're going to be today dearie. I don't even know if you can see that guy. There we go. This is when you need an extra hand. Actually, this is when the. Excuse the camera. This is when little legs comes in extremely handy to either put the bolt in or hold the camera or something. Bloody thing. There, she's got it now. So, that disc, to be fair, is kind of, I believe, where it should be sitting with a spacer on the back. No idea why it's been done differently. To be fair, the spacer on the back of the disc is no different than the spacer on the front of the disc. Really. So. You love it when the board goes tight slack, tight slack, tight slack. Right, ready? There we go. There we go. So if we just kind of put on that one, where's the other not going? And that one. It's just part of them up just. So we can just see, perfect, that's sitting lovely in there, happy days, look at that, I think it just wants to be potentially spaced a smidge his nick that away, but what I'm going to do is kind of measure what that is and then uh, off the other side, I'm going to measure what the space is. I think I'm going to order another two discs. Even if we have to go to high spec and get something sorted, I want to see what else. There's 273 with 4.5 stud fitment and like less space, less in, if that makes sense. So that we can uh, swap that over. But there, that's what it's going to look like. That looks quite nice, doesn't it? And then it's... Uh, Tubeline, it was nice and simple, no need to push things back in the future. And uh, it is a bit tight on that, mate. So, I mean, I know of it. It's uh, yeah, so happy days. One down, one to go on the other side. But let's see, I'm going to have a look, uh, a look for some different discs, I think. But at least for the moment, it's on. All we need to do now is I'll measure what that flexi is. Because as you can see, that one's a banjo fitting, and I don't really want to put a banjo kind of loop. I want to just go straight in, so we'll we'll kind of have it going down onto the onto here, and then up to there. And I think it's an M 
sure it was just M10B1 on that side as well. But yeah, so bar flexies, that's one side done, but we'll get the flexies sorted. And uh, now time to move on to that end, which I know I'm going to have to space the caliper back, but uh, we'll see kind of what we need to do on this side, and then I can make it for the other side as well. Uh, and folks, so a little bit of an update. What we've managed to do is uh, I've just ordered some 6mm spacers and I've got some 5mm spacers here on the shelf. So it's not ideal, but we can do, because it's going to be going behind the disc um, and the disc will be on and obviously kept in place by the caliper, shouldn't really be an issue. And obviously once the wheels nip up, it should kind of, it will centralise everything. So, so yeah, so the plan is um, hopefully have them Saturday or Monday or something. Um, so yeah, get that on, but in the meantime, I'm just going to quickly bolt the back up and then we'll get on with front. So it's took an embarrassingly long time to do the back here, but it's uh, one of them things, I suppose. And then obviously in the meantime, we'll measure because the caliper, flick it back there. There we go. So the caliper's in place. So you can just see on the back there where the inlet is. So I can kind of measure what we'll have it is coming. It's cable tie down onto there so that it's all moving up and down at the same time and then up into uh, up into that there if you can just see that so get that sorted get one of them wait two of them ordered up and um, I'll probably order them next week though when I can get it'll be easier to measure it unless I can uh, get on the other side because I'm not sure they should be the same length but I'm not I can't remember off the top of my head if they are or not so just want to kind of order once and and then on aren't they so but yeah so at least it's uh it's, it's getting there getting there well we've got the wheel on you might notice a glide if you was if it's an old slick on because our wheels are different front and rear they've got a bit more of a uh, dish on the spokes on the front to clear the calipers the rear wheels that are flatter guess what <laughs> don't clear the bloody calipers do they so looks like I either space this caliper back, see what we can safely machine off, you know, if we can kind of machine five mil off um, and space it back a bit. Or we have to get a different disc um, so that I don't have to run the spacers behind the disc and I can run the spacers in front of the disc and obviously space the wheel out. So it's, uh, it's yes, yeah, obviously, it's sitting in the right place, but generally there will be a spacer here, which is kind of this bit here. Um, if you can see there, that's about uh, whatever the gap that is. That's a little bit bigger than what our 10mm spacer is, but there will normally be a 10mm spacer sitting here on the disc, um, which will push it out to there. So, it just gets better and better, doesn't it? So, what I think ideally I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have a Google tonight and see if we can get some Ford 5 stud, 5B108 discs, that are probably more flush here and that are still 273 mil i think i can go up a little well, i can go up a little bit more there's a little bit of an overlap there so i'll probably go to like 280 mil on the rear um and yeah see what we can do but it's uh never easy is it but it'll be lovely when it's done but in the meantime front wheels off so it's now just a case of uh rattle the caliper off which to be fair is uh, two bolts that either take those two bolts off or we can take it off the spacer at the bracket oh bloody hell where we at take it off at the bracket here but what I'm going to do because I need to space the caliper out so I'm going to do it from here take can you see that take the bolts out across here because that bracket needs to stay in anyway so I'll take the two allen keys out allen bolts um, and then my plan is that I'm just going to put a spacer straight down there, push it out the seven, because these are 343, I believe. I'll measure them properly when I get it off. Show sure there's 343, new ones are 360. So that's a 17 mil increase. Divide that by two is uh, like eight and a half. Is that 17? So it's eight, eight millish. I need to space them out, isn't it? But what we're going to do, get them on. Kind of put the caliper up against it and measure the gap. That's the plan, and then we know exactly where we are with this one. Um, so this one, touch wood, fingers crossed, it'll be easier. 
maybe should have started with the front and go out to the back later eh? but let's uh, let's get this one apart um, see what we're playing with and then uh, like I say at least I know that it's kind of off on and then we just need to work out the, the spacings fingers crossed he says Bit, uh... All right. There we go. already got a little bit of space and in the mark she washes so there's caliber <laughs> there went on aren't he and she's off normally i wouldn't use a proper hammer but seeing as how the discs are knackered anyway the little hammer marks don't matter because these are going to scrap so it's uh clean that up but uh, yeah, they've actually had a little spear washer in already. But we'll just give it all a, a quick clean up behind there, chuck the new disc on, and then we'll see how far we need to space that out. Fingers crossed, the aluminium that I have will be, excuse me, the right size. And uh, it's just a case of measuring across there, marking it up, drilling a couple of holes in, and uh, on she goes. In theory, in theory. There we go, folks, just to give an idea. Doesn't look a lot, but I'll tell you what, it's a canny bit. So that's kind of got the surface of that cleaned up. So just as a trial fitment, <coughs> hopefully this will just go straight and I'll put a bit of silver grease on <coughs> when it goes on properly. Blimey! Don't half fill the world on it. Bloody hell, they're massive. Uh -huh. Stick away on the one. Tell you what, big old beasties, eh, mate? Didn't think I would push the pistons back on that. So, pause this while I push the pistons back, and then we'll come back when I've got the caliper on and we uh, measure in the space, eh? Well, got there in the end. No pads in at the minute, but you can see. Spins nice and freely. There's a nice little sort of mill or so gap at the top. Um, and uh, yeah, so I need some M10B3 cap head screws. What I've measured is a half inch depth by inch wide and eight inch long. And then I just want a, a solid bar all the way down that. Um, get two of those tomorrow from uh, local steel stockists and um, just get them in aluminium steel and uh, that would be it so the weekend we should be able to get the brakes finalized which would be nice i'm just gonna put them pads in there actually then i know where they are so yeah it's uh what we should do to be fair actually do again it's been a bit of a um ha have a bit of patience today just with the obviously the measuring and stuff like that But then fingers crossed we'll be able to put this wheel back on and then we'll have a, uh, a look at what the new brakes look like behind the wheel. Et voila, one wheel back on. Spins nice and free, not catching anywhere. And I tell you what, bearing in mind that the caliper, the outer edge of the caliper used to be 
sort of this edge here you, you could get your finger in it's um yeah nice and big the discs now kind of fill the wheel see what difference that makes when we on the track next year but yeah it's been a bit of a time taking process this one so have a back of the drawing board with the rear um get some discs so there's only for so far out and space the wheel out and stuff so it's uh it's kind of with that with this wheel on it's it's yeah it's getting towards the outer edge of that so but uh but no i've got i think i know what i can do with that um it's only going to catch a little bit so i can either machine five mil off the back of the uh caliper unless i can get a disc that sits five ten mil further in and then uh obviously don't need the spaces behind the disc so it's a uh, happy days but it, it's um it sounds yeah it's obviously if the if we have a space on this side of the disc it's gonna hopefully make it sit push the wheel out a little bit more i think i might be talking bollocks here but uh kind of suck it and see my darky isn't it so but um but yeah so thank you very much for watching guys this is kind of part one of the breaks on on tvr um so part two will be when I've got all the other bits, I'll uh, I'll do a part two, get it all finished off, and uh, then we also gonna. I've got the ma master cylinder rebuild kits. Um, master cylinders just down there, which are gonna be a pain in the ass to get out anyway. But um, that might be a video on its own. To be fair, I don't even know. What, sorry, pressing the wrong button. Don't even know what's involved in rebuilding them yet. I'm assuming it's fairly straightforward, but time will tell. But um, get this down. Sorry, you gone tight. But uh, yeah, I think I'll just down tools for tonight. Because we'll be coming back to it. If not, it's Thursday now. So if I don't come back to it tomorrow night, it'll be uh, Saturday. But uh, wait for a couple of bits to arrive for this one. Saturday, we'll be on with this one. Got an idea to make the rack fit, so get on back on with that one. That'll be MGB part two. Um, so I get that one out here as well in the next few days once it's been done. Um, and uh, yeah, so as always, guys, um, hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm um, not sure how long it'll be, I don't think it'll be a very long one to be fair. I've been in the garage bloody hours, but haven't been recording for that long, so um, but anyway, once part two, I'll, I'll go a little bit more in depth once I've got all the, all the parts and. and the, Today it was a bit awkward to measure and record and everything at the same time, but uh, yeah, for part two I'll go a little bit more in depth in what's there with the brakes and stuff like that. But hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you uh, kind of enjoying the content. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've made it this far, thank you. Um, as always, please like, share, subscribe, all that malarkey. It's um, it really does help. Um, you know, we just kind of a daddy daughter team working out of a garage. Um, does fit two cars just but we're kind of making it work and uh, and hope you guys are enjoying the content we're enjoying making it it's we, we have a laugh and um, sometimes it's frustrating sometimes it's a laugh hopefully most of the time it's a laugh um but yeah um uh, thank you very much for guy uh, guys for watching all the best and uh catch you in the next one cheers <laughs>